So first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the programme and sharing your story. Um, it's obviously an incredibly emotional sort of statement that you put out and I just want to give you the space to talk about your story and to tell your story. Just before we start, you still prefer to be referred to as he, him, or the pronouns, that's correct, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, I haven't... Um, uh, um, I mean, as I said in my statement, um, it, you know, to be more accurate, I suppose, you know, I want to, I want to be trans is, is probably a more, uh, a more, uh, a complete description of where I am right now. Um, I am going to be going on that, that journey um, very soon, um, whilst I will, you know, still be an MP. But obviously I haven't started that journey yet. And so for the time being, you know, yeah, still he, him and it's fine. And, and that's great. Thanks for asking. And you say you want to go on that journey. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, I would like to uh, begin the process of transitioning, um, and I'd like to do that as, as quickly as possible. Um, I'd like to begin as quickly as possible, um, but it is a, you, you know, it is a, uh, um, it's not quick, and it is challenging and difficult, and there's lots of hurdles to overcome, and um, it's not, it's not going to, not going to be done overnight. It's, it's going to take many, many years, um, and I think um, now that I am out, and people do know. Um, I'm free to start that and actually take that, go on that journey at a, a, you know, at a pace that, that I, I find comfortable. I guess a lot of our viewers will look at you and they'll see someone in a seat, somebody who yeah. still wants to be referred to as he, him, yeah. someone at the beginning of the journey, as you said. Yes. Why is it that you feel that you are a woman? OK, so um, I, I have gender dysphoria um, and that, that is... Um, and I'm, I'm not a doctor, but my understanding is is that is the medical uh, diagnosis that is, that is that is required for a legal change in gender. But it is it is also the condition that that, that, that describes that um, that um, this uh, the, the, that lack of reconciliation between what what you look like and what your body says and what how you feel on the inside. So um, so that that's basically how I feel and how I felt for a very long time. Um, I don't feel as though my body is, is reflective of who I am on the inside. And you're talking about your body mm -hmm. rather than your clothes or your hair, I guess. Is that quite an important distinction for you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, for me, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's you know, the, the clothes and the, and the hair and the makeup and all the rest of it, that comes after and that's, that's very secondary. Um, for me, my dysphoria was about my, my, my physical characteristics, not about anything else. And how long have you felt like that? I can't, I can't, I can't give you an exact day, um, but I, I do, um, I do remember. I think I was, I think I was eight years old when I, um, I tr was trying to work out uh, what this was, um, because of, you know that would have been um, 1991, 1992, um, and there wasn't you know the ready access to the internet, and there wasn't you know anyone else in my community at home. That, that, that felt like this or, or that I knew about. So I had absolutely no idea what it was. Um, and I remember being eight and trying to work out whether this was something that affected just me mm. or whether there were other people that, that, that might, might feel like this. Um, I, I came to the wrong conclusion. I mean, at the time I thought that it was just me and that maybe there was some sort of horrible mistake or something that had gone very wrong. I think I'd characterize it as, um, as um, just just a a mistake mm. that I was a mistake, mm. and so um, I spent you know I spent a lot of time as a child trying to hide that um, because I was very very worried and concerned about what that might mean, um, what that might mean if anybody else found out, and and it, and it was um, it was much later when I realised that actually um, there are other people that feel that way. Um, not everybody will be thrilled that you feel that way, but there are there are others out there, and um, and and by the time by the time I, I realised that I had sort of um, I had I had I had tried to become this this person that I thought I should have been, which is Jamie, which is this you know this 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 boy and and bloke and man that was going to go off and do, you know and do these things, and so I decided to keep trying to hide it, and I decided to keep you know. Um, Trying to um, um, trying to sort of run away from it. When you say hide it, mm -hmm. what do you mean by hide it? Do you mean by wearing clothes or doing things that you're expected of, of a man, of a, of, a, of a boy, or just pretending there's nothing wrong? What do you mean by hiding it? Well, just not 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 dealing with it. Yeah. So you know, not not actually um, 
not dealing with it in terms of talking about it, being honest about it, uh, letting you, everyone around you know how you feel. Um, and when people ask you, you, you know, <clears throat> you lie. Yeah. Because, you know, people that, you know, I was very careful about people that I was close with. And sometimes people would ask me, you know, um, maybe, not maybe not directly, but they perhaps were aware that, th that there might be a little bit more going on than, than what I was letting on. Um, and, you know, in those circumstances, you would hide from it in the sense that you would either lie, uh, well, no, I would lie, yeah. um, and, and, and you would, you know, and I'd actually, I'd actually say and do things to strongly dissuade that person from ever thinking or asking that ever again. That must have been really hard. I don't know any different, so I, I don't know. Um, I don't know any different, so, you know. But feeling that there had been a mistake, Mm -hmm. But you can't talk to anyone about it, mm -hmm. and you don't know if anyone else in the world feels the same way as that. Yeah, yeah, um, and that, you know that that I just remember being really frightened, scared. You know, I went to a great school, I had great parents, I had great friends, mm -hmm. but I was I was still very frightened. Did anything change, or did you still feel in that in that way? Yeah, I mean, as as things you know, as I got older and I started to learn uh, a little bit more about this issue, and 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 you know, you come, you you know, that moment when you realise that it, it isn't just you, that moment is not just um, it, it isn't just a revelation that that it is exciting and terrifying at the same time. And why is it that changing, you know, your gender is you felt that you needed to do or that you wanted to do? Well, that well. First of all, I mean that that is the um, the the accepted treatment for gender dysphoria, yeah. um, and that is um, what I suppose um, on the inside I've always you know wanted to do. Um, and then you know you reach a point in, you know in your life where you realise that actually uh, it is pretty foolish to live for other people, no matter what they may say, and, and no, matter, no matter what might happen. And you can't, no matter who those people are, you can't, you can't live your life for them. Mm. And about a year ago, maybe about seven or eight months ago, actually, I, um, I, w I woke up one day and I realised that actually I'm no longer ashamed of this. Must have been um, amazing. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. um, I'm, not, I'm not embarrassed, I'm not ashamed of it. You know, this is, this is who I am, this is what I want, and actually, you know, I have, I have waited a, a, a long time to, to feel that way. Uh, and then... Um, the statement I made, I think, was probably um, inevitable once I felt like that. Once I felt, once I felt that I actually accepted myself, then, then I, I think it was always going to happen at some point. Talking about the statement, mm -hmm. um, it was an incredibly powerful statement to sort of come out as the UK's first openly transgender MP. But there was a lot in that statement. Mm -hmm. You spoke about being raped. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something that you're happy to to talk a bit about? Um, yeah, yeah, I am happy to talk about it, um, but, um, but perhaps I could ask, you know, what, what, what do you want to know? What happened? So, um, as, I, as I said in my statement, you, you know, I met, I met someone that I liked and, and, you know, things started off quite well, actually. Uh, and then, uh, the, you know, I, I was not okay with um, not being uh, what I consider to be responsible and, and, and practice um, safe, safety in the bedroom. And so, you know, I, I, I withdrew consent and, um, and then there was, and then, you know, um, he just decided that, the, the, that he was going to do it anyway. Um, and I was powerless to stop him. And, and, and in that moment, a part of me died. And I've been trying to get it back ever since. Have you managed to? No. I'm really sorry. It's all right. I, I think what, what is truly frightening, actually, is after I said what I said, uh, there has been a shocking number of people get in touch with me to say that something similar has happened to them. And, um, and that, you know, has changed my whole thinking um, and, and has, has made, me be made me become very concerned, actually, about... The, the potential for this to be a much more pervasive issue than, than I think you know, a lot of people currently think it is. I mean, the prosecution rates are so low anyway, and these are, of course, just the people who come forward. There'll be many, many people probably listening to you right now 
who will have gone through something appalling and have decided not to report it? Well, I think it's that 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 is that is the you know for me something that I, I'm I'm thinking about at the moment a lot. I can't get over just um, just how many people emailed me and said or messaged me on social media and said you know. Uh, something very similar happened to me, and um, I, you know those that those I know well. I have you know I have spoken to a few of them, and you know I would say you know the vast majority of them have not reported it, and, and no one knows about it, um, and that is really concerning because because um, if you don't know about it, we can't as a society or as responsible you, you know um, uh, people responsible for passing laws or, or, or devising policy, we can't possibly begin to get it right, none of us, no matter who you are or what side of the House of Commons you mm -hmm. sit on, you, you cannot get it right until we have an understanding of how pervasive this is. And that's, that's that, you know, since I made that statement, you know, <laughs> the gender stuff has actually, you know, just um, almost just sort of, you know, gone into the background. But, but those emails I've received, those are the ones that, you know, uh, uh, keeping me up at night. I, I just don't. I just don't know. I don't know what to say other than, at some point, we are going to have to find a way of identifying people that need. You know, that have been through this trauma and need help. I was fortunate in that I was able to go out immediately and get myself some help. And um, 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 you know, and and I've I've had I've had support and I've had you know counselling and I've had you know I've had help to deal with what happened. But but there are people out there that have had no help. I've never spoken about it. I've never talked about it, and and of everything that people have to carry in, you know, we've all got crosses to bear. We've all got things that have happened to us that aren't pleasant, but that is is something that I honestly think no one should ever have to carry on their own. And you, I guess, are in a position where you have got this understanding, and you are an MP. You're a mm -hmm. lawmaker. Is it something that you want to focus on? I think I'd want to look at it if I wasn't an MP. If yeah. I wasn't, you know, um, I'd, I'd want to look at it. Uh, um, you know, I think this is a societal thing, um, so I'm not looking at it in terms of can I put a position paper together or can I do this or anything like that. I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, um, I'm doing the numbers in my head and it, it's, you know, so-called back of the fag packet calculations, of course, but I'm, I'm extrapolating that out across the 67 million people in this country and I'm coming to some potentially alarming figures. I'm deeply concerned that this issue affects far, far more people than we realise. And there are, there are male victims, but they are in a, a very, very small minority. The majority of people that have spoken to me are women and girls, and the majority, in fact, almost everyone in the, 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 the contacted me, the perpetrators are always male. And the, there isn't a single circumstance. It's not like it all happened in one place or in one part of their life or you know, it, it, you know, it, it, it is a range of uh, circumstances. It, you know, some of them it could be a romantic partner, a spouse, or a boyfriend, or an ex. Some of them it could be a complete stranger. Some of them it could be um, someone they trusted, and and there were others as well that withdrew consent. You know, and and <clears throat> you know, you lose all logic when you're dealing with something so difficult. You know, as I did, I, you know, you 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 think at some point, you know, it was my fault, and and it it's and you really felt that before. Mm, I did. You know, and um, I did feel that way, and, and a lot of people that have spoken to me have said, "Well, I did originally give consent, mm. and I, I I didn't have a reason to withdraw consent." And I'm thinking, you know, you know, this is an intelligent person who understands the law, but you can't help but fi feel how you feel. But you know, um, which I guess you as well, you know, mm -hmm. you're an intelligent person, you yeah. understand the law, and yet you still felt. Responsible in some way. I, I felt very ashamed. Ashamed. You know, I felt very ashamed and um, and empty which is, inside. Which is, you know, yeah. you're the victim. I, I tried to forget about it for a few weeks, and, and it almost worked. Almost worked. But then uh, you start getting, you know, nightmares, flashbacks. It starts occupying every every one of your thoughts, and you, know, you find yourself just staring off into the distance because you're thinking about it again and. Um, and that's when I chose to, you know, get some help. You know, and I spoke to a, <clears throat> a, um, um, a doctor and I, you know, a, a trained a person who's, you know, that I've I've had support from in the past on, on other things. And um, and um, it, you know, it, it, I'm not I'm not over it yet. No. You know, uh, um, and like I said in my statement, I'm not okay. I'm not the person I was before that happened. Um, but I, 
I am at least, um, you know, in a place where I can, I can get on with my life whilst I am dealing with it. I just want to say thank you for you sharing what happened to you because mm -hmm. I do think that the more people like yourself talk about these things, it's going to help an awful lot of the people who are listening to you and who have undergone something similar. And, you know, that's evidenced by the number of people who've reached out to you as well um, since you yeah. told people what happened. I, I, did, I didn't want to talk about it. And, and, and actually, when I thought about this interview, I had no intention of talking about, about, about the rape. But, but I, I think we need to do something about... about um, we need to do something about, about what's happening, but I think more importantly than that, we need to find a way of, of, of actually um, uh, um, uh, having victims be able to come forward and talk in some way. And at some point in the future, I will be encouraging people to come forward and talk about these things. And so I didn't think it would be fair for me to ask that of other people and then not answer that question when you asked, asked it of me. In your statement, you also talk about being blackmailed. I know you're mm -hmm. limited. Mm -hmm. and what you can say mm -hmm. on that, but I don't know if there's anything that you, that you want to add there. Just that the uh, Metropolitan Police were absolutely fantastic. Um, you, you know, uh, I, was, I was in a very dark place. You know, it, someone had um, <clears throat> got this information and, and, and had evidence of it, and, and they were, you know, they, they blackmailed me, um, but the police were fantastic. Um, they... Um, not only did they take it seriously, but they, um, they, 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 um, they got a successful outcome. Um, so the CPS, the police, were, you know, were really good. And what, what was it that you were being blackmailed about? My uh, gender identity. Your gender identity, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, you, you say you're at the start of a journey, you, mm -hmm. you're not ashamed of being transgender. No. What are the next steps for you? I don't know. But I do know that, you know, I can if I want, when I want. And so, you know, uh, I've got to, you know, I've got to get on a waiting list um, because, uh, it, unfortunately, it, you know, it, it is going to take a long time before I get that first appointment. Um, I think some people around me were concerned that um, I might move so, you know, very quickly. It, it, and, for the, you know, it doesn't quite work like that. It, you know, it is a long process. It is a, it is a transition. It is a journey. Um, and I can start that journey now without without worrying about you know being you know being seen or what people are going to say or or anything like that. What's the reaction been like since you said that you were transgender? Uh, I've had an incredible amount of support. Um, the 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 whole um, the whole political uh, community, if if we call it that, the bubble, you know, as they say, has been uh, has been very supportive. Which is nice. You, it, and it is. Get a lot yeah. of criticism, don't they? <laughs> they do get a lot of criticism, and and on uh, on most occasions, I have to say, it's probably uh, deserved. <laughs> uh, but in this instance, you know, I had a lovely letter off the leader of the opposition. I had um, I had uh, colleagues, um, and for me, you know, the um, Liz Alva Roberts, Plaid Cymru. We have fights in Wales over, you know, electoral fights and fights on the ground. So to have Ply Cymru, to have the Greens, to have the Lib Dems, to have, you know, everyone standing up and supporting, it was great across the House. And of course, the Prime Minister himself, you know, called me that morning uh, and said what he said. And that was, um, that was, um, that was important to me, actually. Boris Johnson uh, has said uh, that he um, doesn't believe that transgender women should compete in a women's sport. Mm -hmm. Is that a position that you support? I think at the moment this debate has just become very, very toxic. Mm -hmm. um, and, and anybody that tries to say anything um, will, be, will be shouted at by one group or the other. And, and, and actually, some of the way in which this debate is unfolding is doing significant damage to a vulnerable group of people, the transgender community. Um, Look, I am unashamedly going to champion the rights and freedoms of, of transgender and non-binary people. I'm, I'm not, not in any way going to hide that, um, as I as I have been before. I was, you know, before I was out. Um, but right now, as things stand, I don't think it would. I don't think it would be helpful for me to start, you know, commenting on the particular nuances. I think there's a huge amount of mistrust between the trans community and and other groups and and. Uh, and the system, and I think that this debate is being done in a way that is, you know, is being done in a way which is doing harm to some very vulnerable people. So right now, I think what I'm going to do is just 
make it make it a priority to work with those people who want to detoxify this debate, help bring that about, because when we all sit down and have a meaningful discussion where we can transfer some understanding, then maybe we can start to, to, to get, you know, to, to have a proper discussion about some of these things. Just finally, I just want to end by, you know, you've spoken like really movingly about your experiences when you were younger. Mm -hmm. What would you say to a young boy or a young girl listening to you and... I mean, you know, you're a very successful person, you're, you're a member of parliament, mm -hmm. you went to university, you've achieved some amazing things in your life. What, what would you say to a young person, you know, grappling with some of the things that, that you went through when you were younger? I waited, and, and, um, and a lot of young people right now, I think, um, um, are dealing with, with gender issues. Um, and my, my advice to them would be, um, you've got a long life, I wouldn't wait as long as I've waited. I'm 37. Maybe, maybe you can move a little bit quicker than that. But um, but actually, there's absolutely nothing wrong with just you know with just taking some time and discovering yourself. And um, you know, don't feel rushed to you know pick up a label or you know or, or view it in any way. But when you know who you are and you're ready and you want to um, uh, you know tell the world and assert that there are. People like myself here that are waiting, um, you know, uh, you know, we're we're welcoming, we're friendly, and we're here to help and support. Thank you so much for talking. No really problem. Appreciate it. Thank no, you. thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Incredibly moving there uh, by Jamie Wallace, um, the UK's first openly transgender uh, member of Parliament, talking very bravely about his own uh, struggles with gender dysphoria and also rape, of course, and. If you are affected by any of those issues, I just want to give you the number for rape crisis, which is 0808 802 9999. That is the number for rape crisis, 0808 802 9999.